Coming up tonight, hundreds of youths attack shops nationwide, but why? And the mystery millionaire too scared to return home. Is he a big baby? We think so. This is OTT News. News. This week's top story. Shoppers in the Milton Keynes branch of IKEA were astonished when 300 people spontaneously burst into rave mode. For no obvious reason. Our furniture correspondent Tom Bingle has this report. These are people. These are different people. And these are different people again. However, all these people have one thing in common. They are all part of an upcoming disease that will soon plague society and entrap everybody. These people are all on Facebook. And on Facebook, things are usually fine. You can keep in touch with people for free or incessantly poke them until you can poke no more. However, for a group of Facebookers and Milton Keynes, poking wasn't enough anymore. They had to take things one step further, so they descended upon this IKEA store and started partying to the bewilderment of the customers. However, this is not the first case of spontaneous raving to happen in the UK. Earlier this month, a rave broke out in a Marks and Spencer store in Greater Manchester. And three days later, a similar incident occurred in a curry superstore in London. The link? All of these were former nightclubs bulldozed to make way for new retail stores. One of the rogues who wished to remain anonymous had this to say. Well, we just wanted to make an impact, didn't we, boy? Yeah! yeah! You see, you can't change things now. And, um, People prefer things how they were. But surely you agree this is how big business works these days? Well, not in this case, you see. Real people like us prefer the old Facebook. Bring it back! Bring, Bring it, it back! back! Bring it back! back! Bring it back. So am I understanding you here that these spontaneous raves are nothing more than an elaborate protest against the new Facebook layout? Yes, that is correct, Mr. Bingle. And well, it's also so we can get on the telly. Hello. Hi. Hi. I am still failing to understand why the Facebookers have chosen to protest in such a way. It has struck fear among shoppers because this incident could happen again, any place, at any time. Rumours are flying around this week as speculation mounts over which millionaire handed his newly bought mansion back to the bank after he became spooked out of it by ghosts. The millionaire in question wishes to remain anonymous so as to prevent the ghosts learning where he is now living. Supernatural correspondent Jerry Benjamin is in a field. Jerry, do you have any further updates for us? No. Back to you. Thanks for the update. Police in California have arrested a man for breaking into the homes of two farm workers and stealing money. The two men were woken by the burglar, but when they confronted him they were both attacked. One was rubbed with spices while the other was hit with a sausage. We are now joined on the line by Lieutenant Ian Burramond from California Police. Hello. Hello there. Could you tell us more about this extraordinary incident? Certainly. We arrested the suspect, Mr. Vasquez, just after the incident. We found him hiding in a field close by, wearing nothing but a t-shirt, boxer shorts, and socks. Are the chances of a successful prosecution high then? What sort of evidence do you have against Mr. Vasquez? Well, we were able to recover the stolen money, but we had less luck with the murder weapon, which was eaten by a dog. However, we did find Mr. Vasquez's wallet on the scene, apparently dropped by the suspect during the spice rubbing assault on one of the residents. I tell you, this was one weird case. I agree with you there. Lieutenant Burramon, thanks for your time. The case is somewhat reminiscent to one that occurred back in 2006, but in that case a dog was eaten by the murder weapon, a lion. <laughs> 